YouTube decided I'm no longer allowed to use the music in my intro, so now, until I find another one, you're stuck with my voice. What is up guys, this is Lin Theo. Coming at you with a card discussion video. I haven't done one of these in a very long time. But the card that I'm going to be discussing is Ghost Trick Jack Frost. Now we all know my love for Jack Frost, um, having it playing it in my spirits. A bit of history on it and its effects and such. So Ghost Trick Jack Frost is a level one 800 attack, 100 defense, Dark Fiend, and his effect reads as follows, you cannot normal summon this card unless you control a Ghost Trick monster once per turn. You can change this card to face down defense position. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can change that opponent's monster to face down defense position. And if you do, special summon this card from your hand in face down defense position. So you can see how useful the card is. It can be used in uh, different decks. It doesn't have to be used in ghost tricks. And that's what we've been seeing a little bit more. And that's what I've been doing as well because I've been playing three mains in my spirit build. But I just want to go on to kind of discuss the cards. Uh, first off, it's come out in ultra rare. It was originally common but it's come out re-released in ultra rare in the special edition boxes. The card just looks like really nice in ultra. I think it was born to be an ultra to be honest. So it's really cool. It's nice to see like a good card actually printed quite in high rarity or re-released in high rarity. But yeah, going on to the card, like there's, there's a very important ruling on this card that everyone should know about. And it's the fact that when you activate the effect to reveal to flip your opponent's monster face down, it doesn't target. So there are so many cards that it kind of screws them over because it doesn't target. Abuja and Yamato is one of them because they have all the protection under the sun in their grave and in their hand, but they can't do fuck all about Jack Frost. Leo, the massive 3-1, 3-2, three, 3-1 three, three, uh, beta that can't be targeted by opponent's card effects into their main phase 2, gets around it completely. Leaves that face down defense position ready to be attacked over our dark hold or however you wish to abuse it. The card helps get rid of so many problem monsters. And when used correctly, it can take up two attacks really because you can, if your opponent's got two monsters on the board, you can just go attack, reveal, face down, then they have to attack into it. And it's really decent. Like the card is so, so good and it's won me so many matches. For example, in Spirits, we play one tribute monsters. Uh, that's basically a Harpy's Feather Duster and a Dark Hole. And being able to just go like on their last attack normally, you'll just set that problem monster, then tribute it off next turn and just go plus. The card is just so good. And the fact it can be splashed in a lot of different decks that kind of need that extra protection just increases its like manifest by tenfold. The card is a good type of attribute as well, a fiend dark level one. It means that it can be run in Piper Chaos as well. So that's another card for Piper Chaos and a lot of people don't really like Piper Chaos so they don't really bother with it but the deck is actually not that bad. Like I used to run it quite a while back and I really liked it. I do want to pick it up again but that's another, that's another, um, another video for another time. There are some interesting things to note about Jack Frost though, especially with its effect. The important thing is how it can actually be stopped. And there are different ways to stop it, but you know, the outside of the usual vanities, emptiness, you know, and all these things. It's an important line that you must that you must take into consideration is, is this line. You can change that opponent's monster defense position, and if you do. So that's an important card text there, because it just means that if you text your opponent's life voice directly, you reveal this, they go buck on their monster, or they go compulsory, or they do something to get rid of the monster, then Jack Frost won't activate successfully, so it'll just stay in your hand. So that there are important things to note about Jack Frost. The card is just good, in my opinion, as I said. Um, it can be gotten around, but it's, you know, that's just how it is. It's kind of an alternative to Battle Fader and Scarecrow. They all do different things. Battle Fader special summons and ends the battle phase, whereas Scarecrow is discard and ends the battle phase. But if you want more kind of precise protection or precise problem solving against monsters, because neither of Battle Fader nor Scarecrow do that if your opponent still got, for example, Yamato on the field. Jack Frost comes in and kind of screws over your opponent a bit more. When used correctly, the card is very, very devastating to your opponent. And obviously it's going to be taken into consideration because the card can't stop your opponent single handedly it needs to be comboed with other cards so arguably you can't splash this card into every deck and i don't think any cards of bar the staples can be splashed into any deck but it's definitely one to take into consideration when you are building your deck to see if jack frost you know if you need that extra defense can jack frost actually provide it for you so that is the that is the video guys i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think of jack frost down in the comment section below do you like it do you not do you get really annoyed when someone drops jack frost on your 
and you just can't do anything. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I shall catch you guys later.